tell me what you're expecting out of the Deer Earnings Report and, and how that affects how you see the rest of the year for these industrial sectors. Sure. Uh, well, the Deer Report, it looks like it's going to be pre, um, pretty solid. They have very easy counts from the prior year. Not just a year ago, we had some more serious supply chain issues. Deer was also dealing with um, a really rough work stoppage in its core business last year for the first part of the, of the fiscal first quarter. This year, we're seeing they've had pretty good build rates in the fourth quarter, and now that's carrying over here into the, into the fiscal first quarter. They expect to, at least on a daily basis, keep decent build rates running. The farm outlook also looks very strong for 2023. What that means for the overall rest of the sector, you know, as a construction and ag player, they seem to have pretty good backlogs that should carry them well into the, into the rest of the year, if not the first part of 2024. That's just as of last quarter. We're just getting started on the orders for next year at this time. Let me ask how this works. We got uh, some reports from the USDA farm income uh, at forecasting that the, we're going to see farm cash incomes declining 21 percent. You've got the crop inventory suggesting that corn inventories will be one billion lower than just six years ago. How does all of that influence how farmers buy deer equipment? Sure. Well, if you see corn inventories down a billion bushels over the over the previous um, five years, that means that corn's in pretty short supply, so crop prices should actually be fairly high. Um, and so that would be a positive for farmer income. The USDA's outlook for lower farmer income actually uh, suggests that um, there are some nuances. For example, most of the downsides would be seen in the hog and dairy sector, hog being down something like 21%, dairy being down 30-something percent. Um, those types of farmers use much smaller and more commoditized tractors that don't cost as much money or mean much for, um, for, uh, for years net income. The crop inputs are relatively stable year over year, which means that the core corn and soybean farmers should still be in pretty good shape to be buying tractors this year, both on that short supply of crops as well as on the relatively stable uh, costs. You're maintaining a buy rating and a 520 price target for deer. Are there other companies that you like better in this broader sector? Actually, right now, I would say deer is one of the better uh, options, mostly because ag, everyone still has to, ha uh, has to eat, and farmers buy their tractors based on decisions other than the broader macro uh, concerns. So even if it's higher interest rates, if they've got cash income and money to spend, they're going to go out there and buy tractors both to get tax deductions and to make sure that, that their machines can best capitalize on the good income out uh, out outlook. So we're actually thinking that deer is one of the best ones out there at the, at the uh, moment. And, and, you know, Michael, it, it strikes me that when we're talking about labor force pressures, Deer has a pretty significant union workforce here. What are you expecting to come down the pike for the company this year when there is so much demand for quality workers? Well, luckily, Deer has a somewhat brand new contract that they signed at the end of 2021. And so that means they've got uh, the terms that I would imagine workers felt comfortable with. So with everything being very fresh on the books, both Deere and Ashley, it's, it's big competitor, CNH, both have relatively new union contracts. Still to me as they're going to be um, having a decent time uh, retaining people. That, that shouldn't be um, a big issue. 